Hey, Jordan, welcome to another Out of Spec Bits recording session. Well, I like that. We should call these recording sessions. That's what we're doing here. We're, we're filming content for the people, and we're not sure when this video will ever go live because it is applicable at any point in time. Evergreen. Evergreen. That's what we call it in this industry. I mean, maybe. So what's the, <laughs> what, what, what's the discussion today? Uh, so have you ever been on a road trip in your electric car? Oh, yeah. And you know how you can plug and charge into a supercharger? I do. And you know how when you get to an EV Go station? Well, actually, that you can do it there. You know how you get to a, a, an Electrify <laughs> America station and you plug in, you got to use a credit card reader or an app? Yeah, it's frustrating. Frustrating. Wouldn't it be nice if Tesla just shared the details with EA? Yes. And then you could plug and charge wherever you went on any network? Give me the better experience. That is called DC Fast Charging Network Roaming roaming so not just cell phone roaming but we have that term used somewhere else now yes so e ev roaming has been actually extremely popular 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 in europe over the years okay and we are just starting to see the beginnings of this in america there's one example that has been long running that we'll get into but in the u.s roaming is just starting to take off and i'm hoping this episode will get people asking for more roaming this is an advocacy episode. <laughs> this is me pushing for a better customer experience. And what sparked this episode was an article I found on InsideEVs.com, a big friend of ours in the industry. Uh, love what they're doing. By, uh, I believe his name is Julian, or it's Ulian. I can't quite tell if his I is a J or is, but whatever. Seems like a nice guy. He writes a lot of, it's Ulian. It's with an I. Nice. It just looked a little bit odd in the way that I saw it on the previous one. But uh, this guy seems awesome. He writes a lot. I read a lot of his articles. Seems very knowledgeable. And he wrote a um, article about the new Spark Alliance in Europe. And it's basically taking four major networks, Ionity, Fastned, Atlante, and Electra. They say they're four of the largest charging operators in the region. And they're joining forces under the Spark Alliance to make it easier to charge on the go which means you can use any one of those apps to activate any one of those chargers. Yep. And this is something that I think a lot of EV drivers have complained about having, you know, a stack of RFID cards or 15 apps on their phone in order to drive in different regions and different places. It would be so nice if we could just all share information. Yeah, exactly. So um, we are, based in North America. We're based in Colorado, of course, but we do spend a lot of time in Europe and we spend a lot of time now in Asia and other places. One of the things that has worked really well in Europe was this sort of open charge point alliance, I think it was called, um, where you, know, you could basically um, share data cross network, use one app to activate the other and that works so nicely. And here we can see more of it happening in Europe, more companies getting along, because I think it also helps the customer base for every company. Like if you have an Electrify America account and they're like, hey, you can activate this charge point station, that would be really nice to the consumer. Right. Why don't they do that? Well, so in the U.S., <laughs> let's talk about what's happening here. We have some major charge point operators here. We have Tesla superchargers. Mm -hmm. We have uh, charge point really not so much as own and operate, but they do have a big network and a big app. We have EVgo, Electrify America, and Iona. Yep. Now, Iona's whole mission is to roam with everyone. They want to share with everyone. Everyone has access to them. They are wide open. They're like, hey, we are here. However you want to activate our station. Yep. We are, you know, our goal is to give, to reduce the level of barrier. So you can use a credit card. You can use an app. You can use someone else's app. You can use plug and charge. However it works to activate their network. Um, and in fact, we have seen a little bit of roaming between ChargePoint and EVgo, Jordan. Really? Did you know you can use an EVgo app to activate a ChargePoint station? I don't think I've tried that. Yeah. You can also use your ChargePoint app to activate an EVgo station. Nice. And I think a lot of EV drivers have no idea that that's already a thing. Yeah. And then a lot of people like me, I use my ChargePoint app most of the time to activate stations and it works really well. Yep. Um, and there's always different pricing and sharing between the two. And I really do think we need to come down to more of a consolidated pricing scheme for DC fast charging for consumers to understand a little bit better. But we have a real problem in America. It's called 
Electrify America. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've made variations of this title episode in the past. <laughs> so I haven't checked on this totally recently, but I can't imagine their stance has changed too much. My understanding is Electrify America is just opposed to roaming in general. And since they are one of our largest and most popular and uh, and most proliferate DC fast charging networks out there. The fact that they do not currently roam with anyone makes it really hard for EV drivers to just have one app. Yeah. Because you kind of need an Electrify America app just to use their stations. They're doing the Walmart pay thing. What's that? If you go to Walmart. Is that why I can't tap to pay at Walmart? Yes. Ah, oh, screw those they people. They have their own proprietary pay. Like you can't use Apple Pay or Google Pay. It's Walmart pay. So ironic that Electrify America is often at Walmart. They've been <laughs> okay. hanging out there too much. <laughs> and so I understand the risks from a security side and giving up you know, data and sharing and everything. But I also think for the EV driver experience, having one of our largest DC fast charging providers not open to roaming with other networks really makes it tough. And I'll tell you where my main concern lies here, Jordan. Okay. And that is with plug and charge. Yeah. We all are familiar with the Tesla charging experience. You pull up your Tesla to a Tesla supercharger, you plug it in, you walk away. Okay. With Electrify America, they support a similar experience through ISO 15118 plug and charge communication, which goes through TLS backend and, and their certificate exchanges. And the vehicle has to have a certificate installed inside of it. Most vehicles only have room for one certificate. Hmm. There's very few like BMWs that have room for five. Nice. But that's more of a European thing. In the U.S., like one certificate, maybe two, is where we're kind of settling. Yeah. And so that means that if you have your vehicle set up for plug-in charge on Electrify America and you have their certificate installed in the vehicle, then you can't also install an IANA certificate in there. It would require roaming. So Electrify America basically doesn't want people to use the competition i mean i don't know if we can go that far but i just think that that's more of a technical limitation <laughs> right, of this right. now we have seen like lucid for example their certificate doesn't point directly to the network it points to their like lucid charging service mm -hmm. and then the, between them they can divvy out what networks are connected so in fact with the same certificate a lucid can charge on tesla supercharger network plug and charge and electrify america that requires some real technical expertise to do on the automaker side, something lucid would have, but I can't imagine many automakers really are going to go through the trouble to set that up properly. But that sounds like a really good solution. That's the solution for today's problem. Okay. Yes. Which is you need to do on multiple networks. Now, what happens when, you know, Iona comes along and says, Hey, we want to plug and charge with lucid vehicles. Can that certificate work there? I don't know. I really don't know. Hmm. And you know, who would be the person to ask is, um, uh, Blake, who did all the charging tests with us at yep. Lucid, and maybe we should have him on a show. Yeah, definitely. But I just think in general, having open roaming reduces barriers to EV drivers because you can use any app to activate any, any station. In Europe, and in fact, um, th there's a big pricing game going on with all this roaming where certain schemes and certain plans will activate different chargers. So not only is it charger to charger networks that operate, they have things like... Um, Gosh, what was the name? I used to have this card I would use and it would activate everything. So like the Porsche charging service mm -hmm. is one card that can activate a bunch of networks, but there's also a plug surfing. Oh, so you can basically sign up for a tier with some companies and say, Hey, no matter what charger I activate with this service, I'm going to pay 32 cents per kilowatt hour. Yep. And you might win it some, you might lose it others, but they have like a pre-negotiated rate with everyone because with roaming, now you can actually play the game of of which service gets me that charging the cheapest. Right. And so like if you use Ionity at rack rate, it could be like 80 cents per kilowatt hour, Euro cents. Or if you use it with the Porsche charging service, it could be like 29 cents. Yeah. Okay. As an example. So then, then you're actually like open up free market, you know, who's winning, who's losing could get really fun that way. Right. Especially if it's one location that could vary pricing. Yeah. It's not quite like the gas station thing where you might go, you know, two miles down the road and save seven cents per gallon. Right. It's actually which service do you use to activate? Now, I actually think that makes it more confusing for consumers as well. Yeah. So I'm not a 100% convinced that's how we should do it here in our market. But I do think it is cool that everyone can activate everyone for the most part over there. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find these like like this, um, the spark network or whatever, that's really going to, um, you know, open up or I should say make like another service just for those networks, maybe at a better price and something like that. Yeah. So in the U S I think the main barrier to just having complete, op it sounds like to me, every charge point operator in the U S would be open to roaming, open to sharing, except for EA. At least that's historically been the case. Yep. 
I don't know what the reasons are. Maybe we can ask them someday. I would love to have some people from EA come on and tell some stories and stuff. Yeah, I'd like to have shows with every CPO. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be really nice. Yeah, totally. So anyway, that's my request is like just, just roaming and openness and sharing data and sharing activation. And um, I think that's the only way to reduce the barrier to new EV drivers, trying to figure out what apps they need to download, setting up accounts, buying subscriptions to each one. It's just clunky. It's not the way it should be. And you kind of have to pick like one or two and just stick with those yeah. right now. And it would just be so much nicer if you could just go to one charging service like a plug surfing set up an account with them and then just use that to activate everything right yeah a lot of people even use worse chargers because they already have the app for it and they'll even go out of their way to use the one they already have the app for which is wild but it's first it's frustrating and i've like, been there so many times i'll see like a random like i remember <laughs> like i was at a jewel station or i saw something that i'm like that's like on a weird yep and i'm like i'm not gonna deal with that i'm just gonna go charge point yeah i mean it's just, it's just frustrating so it's like yeah, what solution is the solution where the cons consumer wins? Yeah, and so I think, um, you know, have, having an ability to have plug and charge on multiple networks without multiple certificates is really important, and that is only really done by roaming, is yep. my understanding. Yep. And I'm not here to say I'm an expert in this field at all, but I am interested in something that I follow closely, and we just need more openness across all the networks. So that's the request. I think it mostly goes to EA. Yep. Um, we should talk to them before we like hound them too hard because maybe they are open to roaming and they just have weird terms and no one's agreeing to them. Yeah. Maybe they haven't sorted it out yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, what's is lucid strategy, something that alleviates this too. So Ford kind of does it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So they have like one certificate that works with supercharger and EA. Mm -hmm. The problem with those is like, they don't get the cheaper pricing tier either. Yeah. That's the challenge. So no one uses it Yeah, or maybe some people do, but you pay the higher rate. Same with Rivian as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, Rivian rates can be really high. Yeah. Rivian just raised them like crazy. Holy <laughs> smokes. I think we have an episode somewhere on that on this channel. We do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think Isaiah did it. Yep. So that's that. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you're in the charging industry, let us know what we're missing here because I can't figure out a reason why EA wouldn't want to roam. I just think it would bring even more customers to them from other networks. Yeah. So like if you're a, a Tesla supercharger guy, but you can now plug and charge your Tesla over there, that'd be awesome. I'd be in. Yeah. I would, I would plug in all sorts of places. Yeah, absolutely. So, so more roaming, more like what the Europeans are doing. Love to see it. And, uh, more things like this spark Alliance, I think make things better for the EV driver. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at another one again soon.